Good morning, and thank you for attending the International Student Employment Webinar, part of the 2019 Pre-Arrival Webinar Series from the University of Iowa. Thank you all for attending this morning, and let us begin. So, this webinar series is an optional series provided for incoming international students before you get to Iowa City. Our objectives for this series are to help you arrive and, and figure out your plans for arriving to Iowa City, to understand the orientation expectations here and your responsibilities as an international student, and to help you transition to your student life and the academic life here at the University of Iowa. All of our webinars are recorded and they'll later be posted online on our website. That's international.uiowa.edu forward slash pre-arrival dash webinar. And so a couple of weeks after this presentation, you'll be able to find the recording online with subtitles so you can watch it as many times as you need. During this webinar, if you have any technical difficulties, please let us know by using the chat function. Uh, if you have any questions related to the topic for our presenters, please use the Q&A function and ask your questions that way. We'll be able to answer those questions live at the end of the webinar, as long as we still have time. Have you received your I-20 or your DS-2019? Most of you have, but if you have not, you need to pay your eShip Global mailing fee, and then we will be able to mail your document to you. Once you have your immigration document, you'll be able to apply for your F1 or J1 visa. Now, if you have any questions about this, there's a lot of information in the pre-arrival checklist in IHOP, and we can also answer questions if you email us at isss-orientation at uiowa.edu. Some important dates. The, uh, just as a quick reminder, orientation is mandatory. And for graduate students, your orientation is from August 13th until August 16th. And for undergraduate students, your orientation is from August 19th to August 23rd. And for everyone, the fall 2019 semester begins on August 26th. Now let's do some introductions. So we have our presenters. Uh, Josh Fromm. Pauline Beezer James. And my name's Michael Borcheller. I'm just going to be the moderator for this. I'm going to let our presenters do most of the talking. And with that, let us get started. Uh, well, ah, I forgot one more slide. Our goals today, we're going to help you understand student employment, how to do job searches, what kind of jobs you're eligible for, and the help that's offered at the University of Iowa. We're going to give you a breakdown of the student employment impact. We're going to help you learn about Handshake, at the University of Iowa, and we're going to give you some information about off-campus employment and the immigration permission that you need to have in order to have off-campus employment. And then finally, we'll be able to answer your questions at the end of the session. Okay, and now I'm gonna pass it over to Josh so that he can talk about on-campus student employment. Thanks, Michael, and I uh, appreciate the invite to, to talk to all of you today. Uh, welcome to the University of Iowa. Um, so my name is Josh Fromm, the Associate Director of Student Employment Programs with the Pomerantz Career Center here on the University of Iowa campus. Um, and my goal today is to give you a little bit of information about student employment, how it works, uh, some of the outcomes we've seen from students, and, and hopefully encourage you to uh, work when you get to campus. So one of the things that we obviously do um, with regards to student employment is help you get a job. So if it's uh, if you come here and you want a job and you're struggling to find one or have any questions regarding student employment, you're absolutely welcome to come see us within the Career Center um, and you'll be directed towards me pretty much every time and I'll, I'll be happy to help you out. I can help with everything from job searching to talking to you about specific jobs. 
Um, but one thing uh, that I focus on and our office focus on, focuses on with regards to student employment is really making it more of a learning experience for you. So uh, obviously education is going to happen in the classroom and we really view that a lot of your education when you come here is going to be outside of the classroom as well. So uh, we have created a three-step developmental approach to student employment. Uh, through a program called UI Step, it stands for Student to Employed Professional, and that's pretty much the goal is to to have you come in as a student and, and leave ready to be a full time professional wherever you might be in the world. So um, through that approach, we do offer some courses specifically for uh, student employees within the Career Center. We have over twenty five career professional development courses here at Iowa. Um, our UI Step course is one of those. Uh, so one of the things that we do is we focus um, if you get a job on campus we focus on helping you make the most of that job on campus so uh, helping you learn to identify some of the transferable skills that you're learning on the job uh, and then also um, how do you articulate that eventually to an employer when you start searching for things like internships and full-time positions as well uh, for when you graduate so uh, that course is the first part uh, if you get a job on campus, you will also likely be invited to attend one of our UI Step workforce development sessions. So these are one time hour and 45 minute sessions. Uh, we really focus on uh, similar things to that course, just in a, not an entire semester uh, length of time. It's, it's a one time kind of short developmental session. Uh, so we do focus on helping you identify those skills, talking with fellow students on campus who work in different areas uh, and figuring out how to make the most of that experience. We do spend around 45 minutes at the end really discussing how do you stand out in your job and how do you really start to um, to create good habits in the workplace. So we focus a lot on what is the difference between meeting expectations in the workplace and exceeding expectations in the workplace. So we want you to have the knowledge and understanding of what is the difference between somebody who uh, who can stay employed, obviously we want that, but how can you end up moving up in that position? So we do have a number of student positions who do that offer promotional opportunities as well on campus. Um, and this is one of the ways that we try to help you get to that point. Uh, we do also uh, be, uh, view your supervisors that you might have on campus as really important parts of your student development and professional development. We have over 2,600 student supervisors on campus. So um, part of our approach is providing them a training opportunity as well to help you uh, be, uh, help them become better mentors for you as student employees. Uh, so uh, we do partner with international services once a year to do one specifically on how to supervise international students and that goes over very well. Um, so we're trying to arm them with the, uh, the skills that they need to be able to, uh, to supervise you and mentor you as good as possible. So we do help you find employment. That's a big part of what we do, but we also really focus on making that experience much more valuable for you. So one of the things I always ask students um, when I get them in those workforce development sessions is, do you think that working on campus will actually help or hurt your academic performance? And the vast majority of them talk about the positive impacts that it has. I think one of the things that, uh, that make it so is just the networking and social development. So um, with any incoming students, and especially coming in as international students, um, that can be a challenge for, for, for anybody. So uh, we really value the workplace as a place where you can create new relationships with students, create relationships with departments and mentors on campus. And we really found student employment to be a big bridge when you do transition here. So um, a lot of students will worry as well, and I get this uh, in about an hour, I'll present to parents coming in for our orientation on the exact same thing. And they'll, a lot of their concerns might be, does it affect my GPA negatively if I'm working? And the reality is we've studied this since 2006, and every single year we've seen a positive GPA, GPA effect for our students that work. You can see in 2017, it was uh, over a tenth of a point greater, and it's been up to two tenths of a point greater um, on a couple of, of occasions. So we are seeing that positive impact. A lot of that, the reason for that is some of the skills that you see on the top bullets. 
um, as far as just the, the skill development you gain. Um, I think one of the big things too, and you'll learn in orientation, you, there's so many resources on this campus and it's great and you learn a lot about all of them, but frankly, it's hard to remember all of them. But when you work on campus, you're part of the university, you associate yourself with departments um, at the university and you get a chance to work with different groups that help increase your awareness of what the resources are on campus that can help you out. Um, so an, uh, another thing too I think that is really big with regards to student employment is the improvement with regards to time management. So when it's time to study, you, you study. So if you're working 10 hours a week per se, um, you know, we try to make it as flexible as possible, uh, but you are spending some time doing that which makes makes it more important that when you do have time to study, you do that. So it does help create that structure uh, for students as well. <clears throat> so to give you a little breakdown just of how student employment goes with regards to the University of Iowa, um, we have between six and 8,000 students that work every year on campus. So the reality is our university does not function without our student employees. So um, to put this in perspective for international students, last year we had over 500 international students work on campus. And uh, we would love to always see that number increasing. Um, so we have part-time or work-study employees. Uh, for all of you, this will be, you'll be in the part-time category. Uh, so one thing to, uh, to make you aware of, our jobs range anywhere from one to 20 hours per week. Uh, so within that, uh, your job could be anywhere within that time frame. Uh, we actually are not legally allowed to have you average more than 20 hours a week uh, within the, at the state of Iowa, uh, within the state of Iowa. So the focus is making sure that you're able to handle your academics with your work schedule. And the jobs that we post vary greatly between that one and 20 hour range. So you can find anything from three hours to five hours to eight hours. I think on a year to year basis, we usually fluctuate between the 10 and 12 hour week, uh, hours a week as far as an average goes for students. But you have the option based on how much you feel comfortable with uh, to find jobs in that criteria. So you obviously will get paid uh, for working on campus. The minimum wage at the University of Iowa that we utilize is $8.20, uh, but the most frequent wage we see is $9.50, and our average wage on campus is about $10.25. Uh, so the goal when you do start working is we do have you set up direct deposit with your uh, whatever bank you choose to use, and you are paid every other week uh, when you get a job on campus. So just making sure you have some required payroll forms, just your I-9 documentation. If you have a passport, that is going to work for both forms that you need. Um, there's a couple other things that you fill out. So just making sure, um, and, and Pauline will talk about social security number and things like that in her section. Uh, but the big thing is just making sure you have some of that uh, documentation ready when you're, when you're gonna start working. So handshake at Iowa. So you're gonna you're gonna hear that a lot when you get here, and the reason for that is you're gonna use it your entire time at the University of Iowa. Whether you're searching for student jobs, whether you're searching for uh, or internships or full time jobs, we we have all of that on one system. So the goal for you is just to use the same system no matter what. Uh, job you're going to be searching for uh, throughout your time here. So it's our online job advertising board. So we recruit uh, our job in the career centers to recruit employers that want to hire Iowa students. So uh, those are the employers that are coming to our site. Uh, we update that every single day with, with any job in those three categories I talked about. Uh, we have over 8,000 jobs posted right now. So we do, um, not for student employment, obviously, most of those are going to be on campus, uh, but for internships and full-time jobs, we do post not only nationwide, but sometimes international jobs as well uh, if an employer wants to recruit uh, internationally here uh, at the University of Iowa. So those are fantastic opportunities. Uh, with regards to on-campus employment, uh, which might be what you're looking for when you get here. Uh, there are tons of different options there as well. Uh, so we have our larger employers on the University of Iowa campus. So uh, we have a lot of students working 
parking and transportation. We have a lot of students working in housing and dining with recreational services, the library. Those are kind of some of our bigger employers. Uh, but all the time I get students who ask, you know, what types of jobs can I get? And my answer is pretty much anything you can think of. So we have over 200 plus departments on this campus. Uh, and the vast majority of them are gonna hire at least one student worker. So uh, one of the great things about Handshake is you will have the ability to, uh, to filter out your searches based on the type of work that you wanna do. Uh, so uh, you, know, you have the option to either scroll through all of the jobs or uh, just go on there and utilize our filtering system to find the specific jobs that you're looking for. Um, so once you get your Hawk ID and password, uh, you will be able to get started with Handshake. Um, so it's very social media like in its appearance. Um, the big thing I will tell you is uh, at the beginning is you want to co complete a profile. It's just a professional version of your profile. Um, and then if you have a resume, uh, we always suggest you upload that as well. Uh, the majority of jobs that we post are going to require a resume. Um, and we have some resources for that as well to help you out. Uh, you might have a resume already, you might not. Uh, it's okay either way, we are definitely here to help you. Um, that link that you're seeing up there is our Career Center resource for resume creation. We actually have eight editable Word document resumes based on your experience level. So if you are somebody who has just graduated high school and you're coming to college or you have some experience um, through college, we have different template resumes for you where you can literally click on them and edit um, that resume. It's got a great format there for you to help you get started. Um, if you see at the bottom of that slide, we do have uh, a lot of resources and advisors available. Um, you can email or contact us uh, via email or uh, phone call uh, to get help with your resume as well if you need that. Uh, during the fall, we actually have um, student peer advisors that are uh, hired by our office, so fellow students like yourself, um, and you can walk in any time between 10 and 3 and get your resume looked at. Uh, we also have uh, career advisors specifically for whatever field you're trying to get into, and so on my Iowa site, you're going to be able to um, set up academic advisor appointments, financial aid uh, appointments, career center appointments, all of that will be there. Um, so you have the ability to meet with a specific career advisor as well if that's something you're interested in. Uh, and then uh, one thing I do want to draw your attention to, so classes start August 26th, I believe. Um, the first Wednesday of class on uh, Wednesday, August 28th from 11 to 3. Um, and you'll get familiar with the IMU main lounge when you come to orientation. Um, but we do have a student job fair. So usually we'll have anywhere from 25 to 40 of our campus employers that will attend uh, that job fair. Uh, and it's basically a uh, tables around a big room and they're wanting to talk to as many students as possible. So uh, you can come into that. Um, without a job and leave with a job. We usually have eight to 10 of those employers that will do many interview sessions right there at the fair. So it's a fantastic resource for you. Uh, there is a difference between this student job fair and career fairs you might attend later. You do not have to dress up. So you can kind of come as you are. Uh, the only thing I tell students is just try not to wear pajamas to this, but otherwise you are, uh, otherwise you are good to go to come as you are. Uh, if you have time between classes, uh, you should have the ability, hopefully you have the ability to, uh, to come, and uh, the only thing we ask that you bring is your class schedule to that. So hopefully that is a fantastic resource along with Handshake, uh, but once you get access to Handshake, you can already start job searching pretty much as soon as possible. Uh, so if you, uh, I think we'll have some time for questions at the end if you have any for me, otherwise uh, I will pass it over to Pauline to discuss uh, off-campus student planning. Well, good morning, good morning. Um, we are gonna give you an opportunity to hear about um, the exciting things available to you as international students at the University of Iowa for off-campus employment. Now, 
um, employment regulations for students visa let you know that it's possible to work during and after your studies. Um, the focus of today is on F1 and J1 regulations. So F1 is for those with the I-20 and J1 is for those with the DS-2019 and laws vary for employment situations. On campus versus off campus employment um, during the academic program as well as after graduation. The thing to remember is do not work illegally and um, it's best for you to get your information about employment, especially off campus employment directly from International Student and Scholar Services office or from our web page. Um, we are here and happy uh, to help you learn what you need to learn about walking working off campus. J1 academic training is one of the opportunities or one of the options for um, off-campus employment. It can be authorized during or after your studies, undergrad or master's, um, maximum of 18 months of um, academic training. For the PhD level, maximum 36 months. And the application is submitted directly to our office, ISSS. Authorization starts on the day after graduation and actual employment must begin within 30 days immediately following graduation. One of the options for um, those on the F1 is a curricular practical training. You'll often hear it referred to as CPT. It is off-campus employment during your program of study. And um, this is a process for students to receive authorization to engage in an off-campus internship, and some might call it off-campus employment. Um, it requires enrollment for one full academic year before um, beginning authorized CPT employment. The in internship or the employment must be directly related to the degree or the major that you are pursuing. And it requires continued academic program enrollment. Um, CPT must provide internship credit for you as the student. It requires ISSS authorization before participation. It involves collaboration with campus career centers to help students find internships. And here are some of the statistics um, about CPT at the University of Iowa. In 2016, 2017, more than 230 students participated in CPT internships and a sampling of the providers within Iowa, Agon, um, American College Testing or ACT, Whirlpool Corporation, schools and colleges, pharmacies, and even symphony orchestras. Outside Iowa, um, companies include Amazon, Apple, General Motors, Siemens, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Deloitte, uh, major universities and hospitals. F1, the other option, um, the other employment opportunity is um, optional practical training. You'll hear that referred to as OPT, and that is off-campus employment after graduation. Students who complete an academic program are eligible for up to 12 months of post-graduation employment in the US. The employment must be directly related to the degree that's received. Application is submitted directly to the US Department of Homeland Security for approval. And um, our office is involved in assisting the student with the completion of that application. The application process includes a fee that's paid to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Uh, there's a three to four month approval process. Students may remain in the U.S. while awaiting approval. No employment, paid or unpaid, will be allowed during the waiting period after graduation. Again, no employment that's paid or unpaid can be engaged in during the waiting period after graduation. ISSS office assists with the application process. We also um, are involved in ongoing tracking and reporting after authorization for OPT and during OPT. 
um, STEM extensions for those students who are um, in science, technology, engineering, and math, those fields, some of those fields may qualify for an additional two-year OPT extension beyond the 12 months that I previously mentioned. This um, option or this opportunity is based on specific classification of instructional programs, or we refer to it, the government refers to it as the SIP code number. And those numbers are assigned by the federal government to all majors of study in the U.S. The OPT STEM list may be update, updated by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security based on employment needs. And ISSS, just a side note, has no um, power to have a major added to the list or removed from the list. Examples of some of the STEM majors include actuarial science, biochemistry, biological sciences, computer science, educational statistics, uh, engineering, most of the engineering uh, programs, management science, pharmaceutics, and psychology. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. It's, it's an example of um, some of the OPT STEM majors. <clears throat> STEM extensions provide extended practical employment training. The application process is similar to the 12-month OPT. Unlike the 12-month OPT, STEM extension employers must sign an agreement to pay a fair wage and have the means to provide student professional mentoring in the field. OPT statistics of the at the University of Florida, of the University of Iowa, I apologize for that, um, include more than 600 students in 2016-17 participated in OPT. And some of the OPT employment em employers um, include within Iowa, Agon, Transamerica Life Insurance, Wells Fargo, Pearson and Rockwell Collins. Outside Iowa, Amazon, Apple, Capital One, Citigroup, Fidelity Investments, General Electric, Intel, Tata, and United States um, National Institute of Health. The H-1B visa, there's not a whole lot that we will say about that in, other than it um, provides limited employment visa for specialty work fields. There's usually a three-year term with the option to extend to up to six years. The employer must apply on behalf of the employee. So um, the, the person who is finishing up as a student and is interested in H-1B cannot initiate um, on his or her own um, initiative, cannot be initiated by the employee alone. Again, um, employment is tied to the employer who is filing the application. F-1 OPT students um, who want to remain with the employer longer, um, they have the option of negotiating or uh, discussing with their employers uh, the opportunity for the H-1B sponsorship. There is a limited number of, uh, or a cap of H-1B visas available in the U.S. each year. 65,000 with 20,000 reserved for masters or higher. Usually far more applications are received than are available for H-1B visas. And um, there, they, there's a lottery system that is used. April 1st is the first day that H-1B applications can be submitted each year. And the, in 2017, this gives you an idea of how um, competitive it is, the cap was reached within four days. Employers must understand the process and they need to be able, uh, they need to be prepared to file the application on April 1st. Recent uh, information shows one in three chance of approval. If approved, the H-1B is not effective until October 1st. Students must have another means of legally remaining 
um, in the U.S. and continuing employment, usually OPT through the cap gap process. Um, that is something that um, can be discussed in the office when you're on campus. Um, so please uh, take advantage of the opportunity if you're interested in pursuing that down the road. Timing is extremely important and requires important communications with our office. The typical process for F1 students interested in U.S. employment is as follows. You graduate with a U.S. degree. Um, you apply for and receive approval for the 12-month OPT employment. Those who have um, SIP codes that are on the STEM list, science, technology, engineering, and math, can apply for and receive approval for the two-year OPT STEM extension. Um, next in line would be the H-1B. Um, application process and then the last step would be the green card and that also um, is sponsored outside of uh, the office it can be sponsored by the employer or there are other means for um, gaining approval working with your employer or your attorney the h1b visa and academic training um, this is an area that's really going to require um, a lot of conversation and a lot of understanding of um, how the regulations impact the J-1 visa holder. Certain regulations might prevent immediate change to H-1B. Um, and because the rules are so complex, they won't be covered today. We'll provide information in our office after your arrival. For help with finding internships and employment, um, the Pomerantz Career Center has resources such as Handshake, Peer Advising, Career Fairs, um, International Job Search Resources, Job Search Tutoring, Resume Writing, Interviewing, Networking. And if you want to know more information about what can I do with a major in, uh, please take advantage of the links that we've provided. Um, those will take you to more detailed information. Social security numbers. Um, it's important to understand that social security numbers in the US are for employment purposes. Uh, there's a specific process that will be explained in great detail or greater detail than here during orientation. No advance application is allowed, in other words, um, a student cannot submit an application for the social security number before arriving in the U.S. or um, once you immediately after arriving in the U.S. Employment must begin before applying for the social security number. So regardless of what um, you might hear from peers or from other people who have um, gone through the process of education that you are about to embark on, um, please get your information from our office and from the resources that we provide. Your application can be submitted during the second week of classes and special letters are required from employers and from um, the International Student and Scholar Services Office. Again, on-campus employment must begin before you can apply for the social security number. For off-campus employment, such as for CPT and OPT, um, student may, must apply for the social security number on or after the first day of internship employment. And for OPT, the student may apply for the social security number as part of the OPT application process. Now, if a student has already obtained a social security number um, for working in their on-campus position, a new social security number is not required when applying for OPT. Contact information for employment questions. You can um, reach out to us at isss at uiowa.edu and for the pre-arrival checklist questions or other issues before arrival, please contact ISSS at isss-orientation at uiowa.edu. 
and we look forward to having you on campus and um, answering your questions and, and making this a very uh, productive experience.